Let's bring in David Gross, managing partner of Bain Capital Asia. David, great to see you. Uh, can we start Hi. with uh, Japan? And uh, can you tell us what your plans for Kioxia are exactly? Uh, formerly Toshiba Memory, uh, after that $18 billion uh, buyout, highly complex deal, wasn't it, involving US stakeholders and South Korean uh, financing? Sure. So this was a, a landmark uh, investment, as you uh, say, in part because it was the most significant, largest uh, carve out from a major a Japanese corporation, Toshiba. Um, it's also uh, a critical uh, business in the technology infrastructure uh, globally. Uh, you know, it makes NAND memory chips one of the market leaders. And since we made the investment, we've been supporting the business with a lot of uh, investment. We've expanded uh, manufacturing capacity significantly, R&D, uh, new products, and it's been on a, a very good growth trajectory. Uh, as typical with our uh, investments, as we get in there and add value, um, grow the business, we create opportunities uh, down the road to uh, monetize the investment, uh, in this case, uh, to try to take the business public in the future uh, or other, other opportunities. And if we could stay in Japan, David, what happens to uh, Hitachi Metals after Bain closed that deal in 2021? And, and what's happening? Can you bring us up to speed with the uh, U.S. subsidiaries of Hitachi Metals, including Proterial, which I gather you plan to spin off? So Proterial is actually, that's the name of the, the, the new name for Hitachi uh, Metals globally. And, uh, you know, it's a big global business with some, some very specialized technology in the uh, metal space, serving electric vehicles, serving uh, the electronics areas, consumer electronics. Uh, and again, similar to Coke, the plan is to really grow that business, um, drive it globally, build some, some additional uh, kind of customer footprint in, in the aerospace sector and some of the faster growing areas like, like uh, battery technology. And so since carving uh, this out of, of uh, Hitachi, uh, we've been rolling up the sleeves and, and working with the manager team to uh, to drive into these these new markets. David, if we get back to Kioxia for just a bit, uh, Sri was suggesting a very complicated deal involved with South Korean financing as well. More than anything else, though, it strikes me that this is sort of a key geostrategic deal as well. And in terms of monetizing it, uh, exit, I mean, what are the options on the table realistically? Because, I mean... You know, I mean, IPO is one thing, a trade sale. I can't imagine Kioxia or you guys selling Kioxia to, let's say, a, a Chinese entity. Or should I imagine that if the numbers are right? You know, I think the, the, the real opportunity here is to create this global technology leader. And as we're successful in doing that, you know, we're, we're very confident there'll be, there'll be opportunities. It clearly uh, can be a public company. It's got the scale. It's got the growth characteristics. And, uh, you know, as we've said, that is the, that is the primary path. Uh, but, you know, we're uh, opportunistic. We'll pursue, you know, the opportunities that are, that are in front of it. Um, I do agree it does have, you know, critical importance to this global technology uh, infrastructure. Um, but in our view, that's what really makes, you know, Kyoksha a great, a great business. All right. And, you know, sure, you was just talking about uh, Berkshire Hathaway. And this is obviously because Charlie Munger just uh, passed away. But, I mean, they've, they've uh, for a while now, they've had uh, quite a, a keen interest in Japan, specifically betting big on their trading giants, uh, the, what are known as, I guess, the Keiretsu or the Sogo Shosha. Are, are you as interested in, in, in those names or not? So, you know, those are big diversified businesses that play in a, in a lot of, uh, you know, product lines. And so I'd probably think about them as more uh, partners. We work very closely with the big uh, trading companies. Um, we've made uh, joint investments uh, with them. In fact, we partnered with uh, Itochu uh, on a, a large uh, investment called Bell Systems many years ago. Um, a lot of dialogue uh, with them where we can kind of share, you know, industry knowledge and try to find opportunities both in Japan and outside of Japan. So yes, they're very important players. They're partners to firms, uh, to firms like us. And, um, you know, we can see why uh, Berkshire Hathaway would be interested in them because, uh, because they're, they're important and, and uh, successful companies. David, just walk us through where you are deploying the capital uh, from the Asia V fund that you just uh, closed and what part is India gonna play and how compelling is the landscape there? 
Sure. So, you know, we're underway in terms of, uh, you know, making investments uh, for, from this fund. Uh, you know, as we've talked about in the past, we have a Pan-Asia strategy. And so we're actually pretty balanced across uh, Japan, China, India, Australia, Korea, and a little bit in Southeast Asia as well. Um, India is is a very important market. Um, it's been a it's been a market where uh, we've invested in some you know large uh, transformational companies like Axis Bank and Hero uh, Motors in the past, um, but also in some founder founder owned businesses where we've uh, partnered with with uh, uh, founders and promoters on on their succession succession plans, and we think you know India is going to be a big part uh, of the of the future of this fund. Um, industry sector-wise, a lot of opportunities in pharmaceuticals uh, and chemicals where we made investment, but also targeting the growing uh, consumer sec sector. We made a big investment in a wealth management platform, uh, big underpenetrated sectors. As you see income growth, as you see the middle class uh, start to consume more products and services, this, this is going to be the really big opportunity for India in the next five to ten years. Understood. David, if I could just circle back to Japan and ask you, what are your plans for the Showa real estate that you acquired back in 2024? 817 million comprises a huge land bank, data centers, logistics, warehousing. Does that make strategic sense? Yes, you know, this is has turned out to be actually a very strategic asset, you know, in, in many of the, the big economies uh, following COVID, there's been big investments in logistics, supply chain infrastructure to serve e-commerce. Uh, Showa has um, a lot of real estate um, that that can serve this particular market. Um, and so what we've been doing is to uh, really divide this into the retail, into the logistics, into the kind of commercial office side of it, and then uh, find the best homes for those you know pieces of this overall portfolio. So far, it's going uh, very well. And um, again, I think the timing of this investment was uh, quite good, just given given all the growth you see post COVID in, in the logistics infrastructure in Japan. All right, David, great to talk to you. Appreciate the time. Uh, keep safe. We'll do it again very soon. Thanks. David Gross there from Bain, Thanks Capital Asia, joining Thanks. us live.